Hello everybody and welcome back to this one hour AppSec video. My name is Laura Belmain and I will be your coach and guide for all things application security that you can do in just one hour per sprint. Now this is a watch along video in which we are going to take a look at how we would manually, yeah you heard me right, manually go through and look at the ongoing security of a dependency or library that we have decided to import. Now, I'm going to um, use my own example uh, as a as a walk along. Now, please don't judge me. This is a tiny little dodgy Python script, but um, you know, it, it, it gives us the point. Now, um, this is all it is. It's teeny tiny, but we're not really interested in the code. We're interested in the libraries that I've chosen to include. So in this case, we are doing Python. We're doing keyword extraction using Spacey. Um, now, you might have dozens of dependencies in your stack, so you're going to need to do this for many, many, many of them. So in the first place I'd probably check is our online repository of all known software vulnerabilities. Now, um, you could actually spend quite a long time exploring this place, and I do recommend you do if you go to nvd.nist.gov. Um, so NIST is the American National St Institute of Standards and Technologies, and part of what they do is called the National Vulnerability Database. So this is a place where vulnerability researchers can come and report their vulnerabilities and share the, the information with the broader world. Um, so every time a software vulnerability is recorded and reported, it comes here. So you can actually see on their homepage, we've got a whole screaming, streaming list here of new CVE. So CVE is a common vulner vulnerability enumeration. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? And if you look at the structure of the name of it, it starts with the year it was found, and then there's an ID number. And with each of these, we can actually click through and we can see, ah, oh, we can see details about that particular vulnerability. Let's pick a nice one that, to play with. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, something in a package manager. Let's have a look at that. Now, these aren't just web application vulnerabilities. Some of them are embedded systems. Some of them are in devices. So you do need to be careful and read the details. Um, but what we get here is a whole bunch of information about the problem. Uh, so in this case, we can actually click through to a vendor advisory from Android uh, itself. So there's an Android vulnerability um, that's going to tell us what happened. Um, so in this particular vulnerability, it's telling us a package manager, you can determine whether an app is installed without query permissions due to a side channel information disclosure. Okay, right, so we could see if that is relevant to us. So one way to do this would be to you know, scan through all of them. Now there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually come over to their search tool. So um, you can just search the vulnerability database yourself, which is great. Um, you can specify some bits and pieces. We're just going to keep it super simple for now. And I'm going to put Spacey because that is the library that I am going to be looking at today. Now, let's have a look. Nothing. Now, does this mean it's secure? No, it does not, team. It just means that nothing has been reported in the MVD for Spacey. So another place we can look is CVE details. Now, this is powered by a company called Security Scorecard, but the idea here is that you can uh, aggregate together CVE information from many sources. So here we go. Um, we can search and actually find some results uh, with the word spacey or at least adjacent, but it's not really going to find as much from my weird little Python library. If you're looking at something that is a lot more prolific or a lot more commonly used, you can actually start looking by vendor. Um, we could have a look at, let's see, uh, let's choose a library that we uh, might see. Uh, oh, look for J. That was a thing, right? Um, let's have a look. Oh, uh, put it in the right box, that would help. Look for J. All right, there we go. Cool. Now, the thing to note with CV details is um, do have a look at the results. Certain boxes in the search on this site are powered by Google and sometimes you get ads. Uh, so there we go. Apache log for j do, 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 do. So we can have a look and we can see that actually we've got nothing this year. Hooray. Um, but we do have in 2021 some pretty nasty vulnerabilities and in 2022 too. Um, and you can see that we have some going historically backwards. Does this mean we never use log4j? No, it means that we need to be keeping an eye on this and monitoring it so that if something bad happens, we can update and we can respond. 
So what you would do is you would go for every single library that you have in your stack and you would do your searches and you go looking for them. Um, now, that does feel like a lot of work, I will admit, um, and it can be, um, but you know, you're getting a lot of benefit from these libraries. So perhaps there's an argument that this is worth doing. Um, just going to show you another couple of ways that you can help yourself with this. So, and this is libraries.io. Um, now libraries.io started out as a volunteer project and it's still uh, a very good, very free tool. Um, now what libraries.io is it aggregates all of the updates for packages across all of these different languages. So you can see on my on the screen right now, you see all of these different package management systems. And so it's going to tell you if you configure this, which ones have updated in your space. Now that can be really, really helpful. You can use their data and use their API and search it. So if you want to do some automation, like we saw in the earlier sprints, you could use that their API to search automatically. Um, you can, for open source projects, you can actually set this up free of charge and you can actually get notifications. Um, so there's some quite nice features here that are nice and free of charge, but it gives you a bit of a, an idea of the scope of what you need to do here. So if we're going to do this manually, some other ways that we could do it. Now you could decide, well, I don't care whether my one vulnerability is found in, in one library. I'm just going to keep everything up to date. And that's a perfectly valid approach too. Now, if you're in Node, NPN land, you're going to be familiar with terms like uh, and parts of the tooling like NPM outdated. If you haven't used this before, go check it out. Um, and that's going to have a look at all of your NPM packages and tell you if there are any that you're using that are out of date. Now, um, it's not just unique to the NPM or Node ecosystem. So in Breakman, uh, so in <laughs> It's not just unique to the Node ecosystem. So in Ruby, we have Breakman, which is uh, an open source security scanner that's going to tell you if you've got any issues in your Ruby code. We have uh, in Python, this is me doing what you would do every time that you're asking a, a basic question. How do I find it in Python? Well, you do pip list dash dash outdated. And every single ecosystem has a tool like this built in somewhere. Is it glamorous? No. Is it going to automatically do it for you? Not unless you script it but these tools could be a really, really helpful way of spotting your active date dependencies. Now, finding them is the easy part, doing something about it, not so much. So maybe we could have a dig into that in future videos. And what do we do when we find out how many outdated packages we're using? I hope that's been useful. Go and have a look at the National Vulnerability Database and all of the wonderful things there. Have a check at CVE details if you want to have a slightly different interface to that data. And then for your ecosystem, either start with libraries.io or have a check at things like npm outdated, pip uh, list outdated, or look at Breakman in Ruby or whichever language you happen to be in and see where you go. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please pop your comments below if you have things to share and remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.